Greetings, greetings to all my dreamers and dreamettes. It's your boy, Mickey Fenty, a.k.a. Mickey Made It. If you're new to this channel, you know what to do to this channel. Subscribe right now. And if you want to support the brand, it's Inspired by Dreams. Our shop. We got everything from the latest snapbacks, hoodies, t-shirts, everything. Okay, today, this episode, all I got to say is, this is the part where people like to, how can I say, run and hide from the truth or just put a cover up on the things that's actually going on in their family and their lives. We're talking today about generational curses. A lot of families don't like to admit to this because a lot of families they deal with certain situations that they try to keep in-house, but it ends up showing outside the house when they deal with other relationships and other families. So if you're new to this channel, subscribe right now, and we're gonna break down a whole lot of things that might open your mind up to seeing why some people go through the things they go through and some people avoid it. Real talk, be careful who you have a child by. Now let me let me explain though. I'm gonna tell you why. Have you ever met somebody, somebody's family, somebody you was dating, whatever, and and the mom or the aunt or the uncle was just off the chain? They they say crazy stuff, and you like, what the heck? Where where that come from? Even though it's not the person you're dating, that's their blood family. That's the family tree. You understand? What I'm saying roots run deep. Now you you, you get you dating somebody and they showing signs of that that craziness that craziness <laughs> you know mad inner demons mental health all that or maybe like I said a grandmother an uncle whatever or, or or you got family family members doing time for murder come on y'all seriously y'all y'all think that's cute that's attractive then you get pregnant by the dude. Now, your child come out and got a whole heap of problems. Highly disturbed. Child highly bouncing off the walls. Teacher calling every day, sending home letters. That's a fact. When you sow into that family, when you have a seed by, uh, or, or impregnate somebody, you sowing into that family, into that family tree. Every curse every generational demon please understand that if I could go back I, I love my children don't get don't get it twisted but I, I have four children y'all I have four if I could go way back I pro and, and what I know today I, I would have been careful who I select because if you don't have that spiritual authority and that wisdom to clear them generational curses and, and clear that karmatic debt, them past life, all that, all them demons that's attached and be able to teach your child how to protect themselves, that, that's something they have to live with and deal with. So be wise in who you lay with because sex is spiritual. It is an intimacy, it is deep. And creating another life is even deeper understand when they say you are unequally yoked that that's real that's a real thing if you have healed your spirit and you are ascending but yet you you still dating the man that that is living in his pain operating in his lower self he in hell right now but you in heaven what type of child you think you getting ready to create that community how our parents, how our family treat us. Nah, but for real, let's go ahead and talk about it. A lot of us grew up in toxic family households. We are conditioned to not talk about and or address these issues because we don't want to make family look bad. But what about our mental health? What about us? I am definitely the black sheep of my family and I know a lot of y'all can relate. I'm the one that they don't like because I don't take their BS. I don't put up with auntie's mess and her gossip and her lies. I don't put up with older cousins thinking they're gonna run over me and handle me just because I'm the smaller one. I don't put up with my grandparents feeling like they can talk to me any kind of way just because they think I'm beneath them or they look down to me. I don't put up with my mama feeling like she can control my life and live through me just because she's not happy with the decision she made. 
Basically, I'm the one in my family don't nobody mess with. And when you come to the conclusion that you love you, you realize that that's okay. You grow to accept that. A lot of times, family is not the family that you're born with. For people like me, it's definitely the family that I build. Let me give you five signs that your family is operating under a generational curse. Nobody in your family can get or stay married, especially the women. There's a heavy boyfriend-girlfriend culture in your family where people will shack up, but they always break up. It is for this reason that most of the children in your family do not have their father's last names. They're carrying the surnames of their mother's father, their grandmother's father, their great-great-grandmother's father. The point is the last name that is supposed to be attached to them was lost somewhere. The earth, legally that is. Number three, generational poverty. Now, I have to say this, poverty is a mindset. It's not just the outward condition, it's the inward condition of the mind, or better yet, the heart. It's being limited to certain information, that's all it is. Information is an arm. The less information you have, the less your reach is. That's good, golly, or true information, I mean. And anytime you find poverty in a family, you will typically find the crabs in a bucket mentality. A lot of ignorance, a lot of fighting, a lot of drinking and drugs, which brings me to number four addiction runs in your bloodline as humans we were actually created to progress and anytime we don't progress we start going in cycles or systems this is what we call a stronghold this creates a great deal of depression and this depression is oftentimes pacified by addiction that's until depression gets so big that it is no longer satisfied by a pacifier it has to get a bottle the bottle is called rebellion the bible says rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft you see, it's not just about Satan keeping you ignorant. He actually wants you to come into agreement with him. He wants you to surrender your will to him. Eventually, the bottle isn't enough, so he has to start giving you meat. This particular meat is called witchcraft. Outright witchcraft, that is. Number four, division in the family. Division is one of Satan's most narcissistic moves. His objective is to divide and conquer. So your family begins to consist of three groups of people. The rebellious, unsaved, hateful, the ones who don't care about serving the Lord. The religious, those who have the appearance of godliness but deny the power thereof. And a few righteous folks. Nobody likes the religious people, so they separate themselves. The righteous are disregarded by the family because a prophet is not without honor except in his own country and amongst his own kin. So they have to move on to where they can be used by God. And the sinful, rebellious, and those who are just pretty much into witchcraft stick together until some of them start fighting for power um so yeah that last one was actually number five let's just go ahead and do a bonus one mental illness runs in your family you see the mind can be like a country within itself it's broken up into different states there's the financial realm the parental realm the platonic realm there are so many realms of the mind satan typically enters in through one realm and he continues to advance across the mind or over the mind we can describe these realms as real estate. The more real estate a demon has in a person's mind, the more it can incapacitate that person. I hope I said that right. A person who has limited real estate in their own mind or limited use of the real estate of their mind is typically gonna be mentally ill or have mental disorders, which means that that person can only teach their children a limited amount of information, causing their children to be limited as well. That's why mental health issues tend to run in a family. You'll see a lot of narcissism, bipolar disorder, a lot of schizophrenia running in that particular family. So those are the five or six signs that your family is operating under a generational curse. The obvious question is, how do I break the curse? You want to surrender yourself to God. Completely, wholeheartedly give yourself over to God. And then you want to make sure that you go through deliverance. You have to do that by yourself sometimes so that your family can follow suit. There are certain families, they can't own anything. Grandmama didn't own a house, mama didn't own a house, daddy didn't, everybody can't own certain generational issues, living on public assistance, generation after generation. I'm not dogging if, if that's where you are, but I'm saying that's not God's destination. Generational issues, no one in your family stays married. They don't have a problem getting nobody, just can't keep nobody. Generational issues, faking illnesses for Checks, faking injuries, slip and fall, run over a frog at a red light, now you need the ambulance and a neck brace. You know, them settlement people. Generational issues, don't own anything, but where are all your money? Generational issues, y'all got a whole bunch of children in y'all family, ain't nobody getting married to have them. None of the men in the family are faithful. Not one, your granddaddy, your, they can barbecue and they can hunt, but none of them are faithful. Why did, why, why did everybody in my family have babies as teenagers? 
challenge is we see a pattern in our families we can't quite figure out how it happens so we participate in it because that's just what our family does we acknowledge something we don't like it but because we don't have a different scope of how life really works this is the environment that shaped us so this is the behavior that we perpetuate have you ever seen a lot of chaos in a family a lot of brokenness in a family a lot of death in a family a lot of perversion in the family a lot of divorce in a family, a lot of disease in a family, a lot of mental health issues in a family. That family likely is under a generational curse. But how did it get started? I'm going to create two characters. We're going to call them Lula May and we're going to call them Ben. Lula May and Ben were married in the 20s. Ben was a broken man. The son of slaves, he was the first free man in his family. His parents had been abused, so you know what? They perpetuated the same cycle. They began to abuse Ben because this is what they saw as normal. All the same, Ben was taught to not express himself emotionally. His daddy told him that that's not something that a man does. So it goes without saying, Ben starts to abuse his wife. Not only does he abuse his wife, he abuses alcohol. And in addition to being abusive toward his children, he's also emotionally absent. Because of this, his children will have a daddy-shaped void. Any essential that's missing from your life will create a void. A void is a black hole in the soul. It has a gravitational pull called attraction. So that means that that void that his children will have will determine who they are attracted to. These voids create what I call appetites. Now, let me give you this explanation of an appetite. When you're hungry, you can go and eat apples, you can eat carrots, you can eat things that are healthy. But for the most part, nine times out of 10, if you have been feeding yourself stuff like cheeseburgers and pizzas, you're not gonna have an appetite for anything healthy. So while other foods can be filling, you're not gonna have an appetite for them. That's exactly how a void works. Now, let's say that there's a little boy by the name of Ben Jr. Ben Jr.'s mother is too preoccupied with her abuser to be emotionally present for him. So rather than being upset with his father for being the abuser, he becomes really angry and hateful toward his mother for tolerating his father's abuse. Hatred is unbearable, so to pacify the pain, he starts getting into alcohol as well. Eventually, Ben Jr. meets a young lady at his high school. Having come from a broken home herself, she doesn't notice the red flags in Ben's behavior. The two get married. They have children, and Ben Jr. begins to beat his wife as well. His wife comes from a new generation, so she decides, you know what, I'm not about to stay in this marriage and continue to be beat up on. So she leaves, but she goes out there and she gets herself another man who's more like her father. Her dad is an Ahab. He feared abandonment so much that he allowed his wife to manipulate and control him. That's how a generational curse works. It continues generation after generation. It determines the choices that you make by creating a gravitational pull called attraction. And not just romantically, it also spills over into your careers, your friendships, and every area of your life. Ben Jr. goes on to remarry, and yep, you guessed it, he beats the other wife. And this cycle continues generation after generation. Before you think that I'm crazy, please just listen to me. Has anybody else experienced this? Because I really need to know. Anybody else that is highly intuitive, highly empathic, highly spiritual, anything like that, um, clairvoyant, like anything that has to do with that, have y'all noticed the shift in people's physical appearance? As somebody who has always been connected to the other side, I've always been able to see things beyond the normal. I have always been able to use my discernment within that, like walking into rooms and getting bad vibes or walking into a circle of people and being like, mm, I, I don't like that person, like, or even just coming face to face with somebody and just being like, mm, I don't like that. But... Over like the last two months, and I don't know if it's something that I did personally, like within my own like awakening, or if this is something that's happening to other people, and that's why I need to know. But there have been people that I literally cannot look at. Like used to like whenever i would come around somebody and their vibe would be very negative or feel very just off to me like you wouldn't really able to i wouldn't be able to like sense it in their appearance but like these people literally almost don't even look human 
to me. Like, and I know that I sound batshit crazy. I know that I do. And I'm not talking about all of these things that people are talking about they're seeing. Like, I, I literally just, like, don't know how to explain this. Like, and it's in the eyes more than anything. And anybody that's spiritual will tell you that or religious or whatever. It's in the eyes. You can sense when somebody is a bad person just by looking at them in the eyes. But when it is, it's gotten so severe that, like, I literally can't even look at these people. It's like they're it scares me like it's stuff that kind of like keeps me up at night like I'll just lay there and think about it like I've even come across videos on on TikTok like and it's like as much as like I want to watch it or I've I've watched this person before and it's like I like their content but didn't really care for them like it's like I can't even I can't even look at it because like just the way they look initiates fear into me and I just want to make sure that I'm not crazy and that this is actually happening to other people because even my kids have been making comments and my my daughters specifically are very 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 intuitive and they are very open but to the point where they've even been making, and I've never said anything like this to them, but even we were at, I was at Walmart, okay, like um, two weeks ago with my daughter. And she was like, did you see that person? And I was like, I was like, yeah, wh- what do you mean? And, and I tried to just kind of play it off. And she was like, did you see the way they looked? And I was like, yeah, like, you mean like, just a bad vibe and she was like yeah but like they looked evil and like she just and I had never said anything like that to her to like even initiate that thought into her look when it comes to generational curses some people are out there living their generational curse of just living it out but to me I knew from an early age at an early age all about this and I knew how to read people I, I found myself I understood how to read people at an older age, but I was reading people from an early age all the way up to I was an adult, understanding what it was. And when you have these little pieces and different things in your life that you know and you can see the problems in your family or the problems that maybe your parents had, and you can define it and go the opposite way, you break that generational curse. Don't make them same mistakes that people behind you made so you can end up in the same positions. That's the reason why I think the way I do and I value the things that I value. All the other stuff that people have been introduced to and that makes them feel like a bigger person, I experienced all those things and I weighed it out and I know the difference between both. So when you see somebody with a different lens or a different perspective, pay attention. Until next time, it's your boy Mickey Fenty, aka Mickey Made It. If you're new to this channel, you know what to do to this channel. Subscribe.